David. Uh, well, yes, my name is Matt Ritchie. I, I'm the, the archaeologist for Forest Commission Scotland. Uh, the reason there's a bit of a split is that I work for uh, Forest Enterprise Scotland, who are the uh, management agents of the National Forest Estate. So the, the Forest Commission is split into two, the grants and regulations side uh, and uh, the, the land managers of the Forest Estate. And, uh, I provide advice and guidance uh, to, to environment staff, planners and harvesters uh, on the National Forest Estate, along with colleagues who are uh, ecologists, uh, native, native woodland species and open habitats and the likes. So uh, I'd like to say how, how uh, proud the Forest Commission is to, sp uh, to part sponsor this, this event because it's one of the uh, few conferences with such a lovely uh, range of different speakers. There's always uh, something, uh, something for everyone and usually a very high standard of speaking. So I've, I've got a, a lot to live up to, so I hope I do well. Um, talking today on a recent archaeological measured survey uh, in the Tweed Valley Forest Park. Uh, there we have, the maps work quite well. Uh, that's that's the, the forest estate on, uh, the Tweed, in the Tweed Valley, uh, from uh, Glentress and Cardrona um, uh, on the west, uh, down to Year uh, in the east. And the sites we're going to be looking at uh, today are uh, a variety of uh, tower houses laterally, uh, but also uh, the uh, palisaded enclosures and hill forts uh, of Janet's Bray uh, and Castle Hill and Castle Now. There we have the core of the area, uh, with Janet's Bray overlooking Peebles on the west-hand side, uh, on, draped onto a topographic model um, with uh, the two tower houses of Cardrona and Nether Horseborough picked out in red. So starting off with a, a bit of why archaeological measured survey? Why, why I particularly seem to be always at conferences like this talking about archaeological measured survey, banging on about its importance. Uh, and, and in part, it's, it's, it's because of the, uh, the, the tradition that we've inherited uh, from uh, the Royal Commission and their, uh, the Peopleshire inventory for this part of the world, but otherwise it's the inventory for the, for the rest of Scotland. Uh, without this uh, expertise in drawing the, the surveys and considering the sites in their whole, um, uh, 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 archaeology would be much the poorer. Um, our historic environment records would be full of texts and photographs, but not actually the, uh, the, the illustrations and the plans that, that try and uh, bring this to life. So many of our most significant sites, particularly uh, in, in the area that we're talking about, um, are scheduled, uh, they're protected uh, as monuments of national importance, um, and they all feature within the Peebleshire inventory. Uh, so one of the, the questions would be, so wh why have I been resurveying some of them? Um, and in part, it's because, of the, although this is a, a, a very beautiful traditional plan, um, it's, it's about trying to make, uh, 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 make it easier for, for, for people like my, my foresters to understand uh, and, and, to, uh, and as you'll see, there's also a, a certain element of uh, celebration. It's just in the very act of undertaking a measured survey. So I believe we should be doing this uh, over and over again, almost. So the main objectives of uh, contemporary archaeological measured survey include, uh, I have, uh, I've written it up here so that uh, I don't forget. So I, I, I do bear with me as I read through some of these slides. An enhanced archaeological record, so trying to make the historic environment records of Scotland better. A creative response that is both functional and aesthetic, so I, I, I'm wanting to push the boundaries a little bit with what, what you can do uh, with modern technologies uh, and methodologies to, to, to improve uh, how we present, uh, or, or not improve, but, but perhaps present sites differently. Uh, allowing the collection of baseline information, uh, this informs conservation management and allows detailed condition monitoring, as you'll see. Um, so it's, it's that very, uh, although we know the site is there, but uh, we wanted to get a better understanding of that site. Uh, and to do that, you need to uh, spend some time looking at it just in the way that the, the, trip, the, the commission surveyors uh, did and indeed still do. Survey is a visible act as well, I, I feel very strongly about it. It demonstrates and confirms the importance of the site. Uh, and that has a trickle down uh, into the wider historic environment. So I always believe that uh, if, if I can commission an archaeological survey and the, and the surveyors turn up uh, looking very swish and professional in their flash jackets and hard hats with incredibly impressive bits of machinery, this has an effect on, on people that maybe don't know, uh, know the site. They do start to think, well, if, if they care, maybe, maybe we should too. And of course, uh, I'm very keen on enabling the further development uh, of both survey, tech, survey methodology, uh, but also archaeological communication and interpretation, so the presentation of the results. 
Here we have uh, our first site. This is Janet's Bree. Uh, it's uh, a fort that has been uh, surveyed uh, for the last 160 years. Uh, and here we have it from the first edition OS map. Uh, the more modern technique of uh, terrain modelling um, allows Janet's Bray to be uh, set uh, within its wider landscape and in particular with its, its partner. So you have Upper Bray uh, at the top there, you can see the, uh, the, the shadows now of, of, of the major ditches and it's now paired visually uh, with uh, Janet's Bray Lower. Uh, the, the, using the contours and the hill shading of the terrain model, um, I hope, uh, brings out that um, upper and lower uh, uh, visual um, very well. Moving on a little, along a little bit, and I should say, I uh, forget to say, that one of my, uh, uh, I always say to my, my colleagues that uh, my job can be split into three, uh, which is protection, conservation, and presentation. Uh, the protection is largely done by knowing what's where, so we undertake archaeological walkover surveys in advance of, of any uh, land management, like ploughing for forestry. Uh, but we also, um, we, we, we have that on our GIS system, so we, we've mapped it properly, we know what's where, and we can avoid it, that's the, that's the protection. In terms of conservation, it's about trying to undertake positive conservation management, scrub control, and tree regen removal, and that kind of thing on our more significant sites. But in terms of presentation, this is where my, my, my uh, 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 interest really lies. Uh, it's about showing, uh, showing off our best archaeology and celebrating it for what it is, uh, whether that be in a learning resource or within an inter interpretation panel uh, online uh, or whatever, or indeed at events like this. So here we have uh, a very interesting site, Castle Hill. It's right next to Nether Horsburgh, uh, uh, opposing Cardrona. Um, it's a, a multi-palisaded site. You can see the palisades running to the uh, uh, below the, the, the dike there. Uh, although there are larger earthworks, you can see the, 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 the surviving bit um, on the, the, the left-hand side. And there are rain grooves and, 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 and uh, hut platforms within that, this site picked up very beautifully by uh, aerial photography. I think there's a, a light dusting of snow there as well. And indeed, uh, the recent uh, uh, topographic survey um, allows that, that site to be presented both with, with uh, 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 small contours, uh, but also hill shading the, the terrain model, uh, and then dropping on uh, the traditional archaeological plan. Uh, so I'm trying to move forward a little bit from, from the, the traditional um, uh, two-dimensional black on white plan into something a little bit more different. This can then be tilted, so it doesn't need to be done uh, in two dimensions and flat. Um, and you can start looking at the site from many different angles and uh, presenting it, uh, as you can see here, where you have the, the double ditch palisade uh, on the left hand side, and then the, uh, a very beautifully picked out uh, ring groove house uh, on the, in the center there, where you can start to see the shadows of the, of the earth and really start to appreciate uh, the, the hashers of the topographic survey. In terms of conservation, sometimes a site indeed doesn't need a new survey. Um, uh, it may be uh, much reduced and so actually quite difficult to see, um, uh, or indeed photography may suffice. Uh, and this is uh, the hill fort of Castle Now on the, on the summit of Cardrona, all being robbed away for the central uh, sheepfold uh, and little sheep bank you can see there. Uh, so the actual, uh, the, the, the monumentality of the, the, of the ramparts are now much reduced. So we've had uh, uh, UAV or drone low altitude aerial photography, which helps pick up the site uh, and add color to the plan. And we undertake fixed point photography to undertake condition monitoring. So uh, here you can see photograph number one, uh, looking at some of the exposed ramparts or on the outside of the exterior rampart. And you're then marking it on in the direction of travel um, or the direction of view. Um, on the traditional plan, and this is something that can then be done over and over again um, by uh, our rangers as they're doing their um, annual or, or five-yearly checks. Perhaps the, so it may well be that the existing plan is already excellent, uh, and this is Plora Burn, uh, a series of uh, earthworks uh, of probable med medieval date um, on top of uh, a likely later prehistoric, uh, uh, much reduced um, a hill fort of some kind where you can see the, the main ramparts marked out by the commission from the inventory of 67 as A and B in the top. This was a great site uh, and we wanted to do a little bit more research so uh, it was uh, flown for pho photogrammetric terrain modelling um, and here you see uh, uh, the, the hill shaded 
terrain model again produced flat, uh, but with the, the, old, the, 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 the traditional plan superimposed on top. Um, little things like uh, colouring the van in orange helps bring scale, I hope. Um, uh, and, it, and it brings an, an additional uh, um, element to the, the traditional plan. Uh, we were also experimenting with something called uh, electrical resist resistance tomography at Plora Burn because it is a very complicated site and I want to know a little bit more about this. And in effect, this uh, takes a geological technique uh, of stringing out a line of probes uh, along a cable but shortens it down for archaeological purposes. So you do it every metre and it gives you a slice uh, through the, uh, the ground and you can actually start to see the depth of potential deposits. Uh, so the, uh, the, the, the the slice that I've chosen to illustrate, you can see, um, is, is that orange line uh, running from top to bottom. Um, and here it is so shown in uh, section, uh, where you can see the bank on the uh, left-hand side, the upper bank, um, shallow uh, 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 occupation activity, uh, and the other bank, and then this red stuff uh, are, are, is a spread of stones. You're getting a very high reading. Um, I think this, this, this new technique is, is, is fantastic. Flora Barn, clearly not actually the right place to try it out at because the deposits are very shallow. But if you had the right, the right site, um, it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting technique. Um, and this is us trying to, to develop the, uh, the presentation of that data. Uh, so it's not just a, a series of uh, slices, of, a, of a ERT slices, but um, now we're trying to drop it onto the plan so you can see where it comes from and, and work it out visually. So, in terms of conservation, turning to our uh, tower houses. Um, we have a, a number of tower houses on the Forest Estate in the Tweed Valley um, in a variety of different states of repair. Uh, this is shield green, and I'm afraid you're not seeing it in its full glory, it's a bit dark there. Um, it's basically uh, a few bits of rubble um, on top of a grassy knoll with, with a major ditch cut around, around the, the site. Um, so there's probably lots of very interesting archaeology in there, but in terms of uh, uh, an upstanding site that's, that's very visible, um, it's, it's not one of the best. Cardona Tower, on the other hand, uh, a tremendous site, but in terms of conservation management, just what, what are the options? What, sh what should we be doing uh, to try and uh, uh, protect and conserve the site of Cardona Tower? Um, so it's about trying to value or uh, weigh up the conservation options. Uh, and in doing so, uh, you have to start looking in, in the more holistic, uh, uh, wider context. So to begin with, uh, the Scottish Castles Initiative uh, noted that Cardona Tower would be sufficiently complete to permit restoration with very little need for conjecture. However, the very limited accommodation that it offers, together with the remote location and the difficulties of providing services, might be problematic uh, for any proposal. Now, I, I thoroughly agree with that. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to spend half a million pounds and move into Cardona Tower. You wouldn't be able to swing a cat. So, uh, what are the conservation options? Uh, they range really from restoration uh, through consolidation or repair uh, down to maintenance uh, and, and minimal intervention. This is uh, one of the uh, 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 results of the laser scan survey that was undertaken by AOC in 2011 uh, and a series of very nice uh, 3D models that you'll see uh, throughout this. So when considering the cultural significance of a historic place, which is very different to judging uh, its importance in terms of scheduling, for example, uh, and weighing up the various conservation options. Several key conservation principles should be followed, and these are all based on current uh, guidance and policy. Firstly, the change within the historic environment is inevitable, and a significant historic place should be managed to sustain its values. An understanding of the significance of a historic place is vital and requires the gathering and consideration of all the evidence. The historic environment is a key resource in landscape character and in shape shaping local communities. It's about pride of place, the power of place. And an appreciation of previous conservation management techniques and examples of best practice is also essential. So in terms of assessing the cultural significance, significant historic environment places may be expected to display important and interrelating inter intrinsic characters. So these are these in, they're inherent within the monument itself, such as condition, potential survival, uh, both above and below ground. Contextual characteristics, such as landscape setting of the site itself, but also its group value uh, of the monument, um, whether it's a well-preserved example of an unusual and significant monument, for example. 
but also associative characteristics. So these are more subjective assessments, such as the aesthetics of the site, the histor many, any historical associations, um, or if the a site has enhanced value to the public as an accessible and significant monument. So, how, where do my three towers, the Towers of Shield Green, Nether Horseburn and Cardona, sit within the wider canon of Scottish borders towers? towers? So as you can see from this fine distribution map from uh, John Dent and Rory MacDonald's 2000 uh, publication, uh, Warfare in the Scottish Borders, I think it was, um, the distribution of towers and battles, there are quite a lot of them. I think there were over 80, um, uh, well over 80 um, on record. And they range from things like Glentress Tower, um, which is proper archaeology in the wild, you trek for miles to get there. Um, it's been robbed out uh, as part of the sheepfold. Uh, it sits within a wider uh, landscape of uh, interesting dikes and earthworks. There are houses around about it. Um, its archaeological potential is absolutely assured. However, um, you can see the tower, the remains of the tower in the, in the centre there. Um, it, it is very likely that uh, without the, a huge upturn in the, in the fortunes of archaeology, um, this site is likely to remain uh, archaeology in the wild, and its fine rock mission plan is, is probably the best it can hope for. There are also things like Lay Tower, um, displaying, I guess, uh, good location archaeology, because the location has always been in use, and as now Lay Tower is uh, itself supporting uh, a variety of ramshackle farmyard buildings. Um, like many towers in the borders, uh, I think Ley is probably uh, slightly more uh, extant than, than most, but uh, uh, it's a good example of this idea of archaeology on the farm. Horsborough Tower that you might see on the road, uh, it was restored as a folly in the mid-19th century. Um, it's now a shell of its former self and it's been vastly tinkered with and actually bears very little resemblance to what it once would have looked like. Um, and indeed, uh, um, has been, uh, uh, it's, it's the only one uh, within the, the personal guide uh, which basically says no uh, uh, original architectural features that survive at all. And Barnes Tower, a, a very fine site, uh, restored in the late 18th century um, and then again uh, in 20, 2001 to 3, but I think probably not actually um, in use as, as a family dwelling uh, and, and I suspect locked and empty. So, following an assessment of cultural significance, uh, Cardona Tower, um, and by extension, Never Horseburg, I'm, I'm just going to talk about Cardona here, um, has significant intrinsic characteristics. Uh, it's an impressive structure with the potential survival of important archaeological evidence both above and below the ground. It has significant contextual characteristics. It is a well-preserved example of a relatively rare and important national site type with important group value resulting from its association with nearby towers. And it has significant associative characteristics because although it's not readily accessible to the public, the tower does have clear aesthetic attributes as a really impressive ruin, unconsolidated. So with a program of managed decay, which includes the removal of woody growth and scrub vegetation, cognizance to any ecological assets such as bats and rare lichens and the like, Cardona Tower will remain an archaeological and historic site of great importance for some time to come. The context of conservation is as much about retaining historic character as it is about slowing decay. So the site as a whole, an unconsolidated tower and its surrounding archaeology, is of significant importance as an archaeological resource. So as an archaeological site, without modern consolidation, it retains much greater degree of authenticity and integrity, displaying the patina of age so lacking at restored or consolidated towns. Coming towards the presentation, however, here we see Nether Horsburgh Tower, um, a view of the, the back end. Um, Nether Horsburgh is a very interesting site. One entire site has fallen away um, and been removed. So it's now really just a, a kind of a, a three-sided cube. Um, again, AOC archaeology laser scanned it and we have a, a series of really rather well presented um, elevations and plans, sections all, all, all uh, labeled with architectural features of interest and, 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 a, and a, a, a large photographic survey has, has recorded this site. We have a number of really interesting and rather, really rather beautiful 3D views, um, such as this one, uh, where you can start to see the, uh, the, the great holes that have opened up over the years within the, the, the historic fabric of the site. And I was wondering what to do 
with this report to make it a little bit more interesting, particularly thinking about this very event and how best to maybe publicise it and get a little bit of interest um, within the Forestry Commission. So, I hope you can see that. Uh, the idea of the very archaeological cutout was born. Um, I stitched them all together. And if, you now, they're, they're, if, you're, if you're quick, there are some copies still lying over there. You can take your scissors and very carefully cut it out and sellotape it together. And make your own very small scale model <laughs> of Nether Horsburgh Tower as a very archaeological cutout. And uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.